Good evening. Welcome to Have I Got News For You. I'm Joe Brand. In the news this week, in the offices of Wonga.com, two desperate customers apply for a massive loan. <laughs> At their regular briefing at Labour HQ, the Shadow Chancellor looks for a leadership poll that he can actually show to Ed Miliband. <laughs> <laughs> and the scandal over how little Starbucks has paid the inland revenue takes a new twist as the company reveals its current tax advisor. <laughs> On Ian's team tonight is a writer and comedian who's written a book called The Joy of No Sex, presumably a guide to married life. Please welcome Will Smith. <laughs> and with Paul tonight is a TV and radio presenter who once appeared in Hotel Babylon, in which his character hired escort girls to play Scrabble with him. He then had sex, which was worth ten points. <laughs> Please welcome Richard Bacon. <laughs> and we start with the bigger stories of the week. Uh, Paul and Richard, take a look at this. Oh, yes, Prince Charles, yes. He writes letters to various <laughs> government ministers, um, you know, saying what he would like to happen about mm. certain issues and things, um, but we're not allowed to see them because it might affect him when he's king, apparently. Yeah. It's him practising being a king at the moment. Yeah. Yes. He, he practises being a king every Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> Work experience, it's called. <laughs> it's come from Dominic Grieve, hasn't it? Who has... Because I think Prince Charles wrote a lot of letters to Tony Blair's government in 2004 and 2005, commenting on a range of issues. What, from biscuits to yeah. yoghurt? Yeah. <laughs> I like your wife. <laughs> <laughs> but Dominic Grieve's... Uh, he's the Attorney General, and his position appears to be that Prince Charles is supposed to be neutral, but because he hasn't been neutral, you can't know what he hasn't been neutral about. Because we'll get if, upset. If you knew what he hadn't been yeah. neutral about, then you wouldn't think he was neutral. Mm. You're absolutely right. This has been vetoed by uh, Dominic Grieve, as you said. He's the Attorney General, and he's a bit like that old Grievey, from what I know of him. Uh, and last month... Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> according to The Guardian, the ban relates to... 27 particularly frank letters mm. oh, I see them. sent over a seven-month period between September 2004 and April 2005. Um, so nobody knows the contents of the letters, but does anyone know what happened in April 2005 that Charles might have been writing letters about? Oh, who won the X Factor? Um. <laughs> in fact, on April the 9th, 2005, Prince Charles married Camilla Parker Bowles. Oh, really? So what do you reckon? I reckon they were just invites. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're, they're called the black spider letters because the handwriting looks like black spiders. But what, what if he's actually just writing about black spiders? <laughs> and he's got yeah. Yeah. Or what, signs it the black spider, as some kind of bizarre superhero. Mm. <laughs> so Prince Charles by day, by night the, the black, black spider. spider. <laughs> <laughs> the big spider costume with yeah. eight pens running across <laughs> modern buildings, going, "Oh, I hate the architecture." <laughs> <laughs> It's Black Spider. <laughs> oh, you need, need a thing tune near yeah, it. Yeah, he's got a thing tune. Black Spider. Black Spider. <laughs> and he's got a call sign mm. in the sky. <laughs> <laughs> the sign goes up. The Book of Common Prayer is under assault. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> When you mix with popular culture, it's always a very strange <laughs> byproduct we get. Shall we have a look at some of his handwriting? Mm, yeah. That says, well done on such a splendid effort. I can't tell you what a difference it makes or how much pleasure it gives me, Charles. That was uh, just off the first time he had it off with Diana. <laughs> um, uh, meanwhile, in other royal news, by whom is the Queen not amused this week? Jeremy Hunt. Indeed. Yeah. He's currently glorying in the title of the dimmest man in Britain. Mm. And uh, he said to the Queen, a Japanese tourist said to me that uh, we'd never get the Emperor to jump out of a plane. And she just looked at him and went... walked off. <laughs> and then Prince Philip came up and said, who are you? Then head-butted him. <laughs> Jeremy Hunt went down like a sack of corn. Princess Anne came in and booted him in the, uh, in the uh, parliamentary privilege. And, uh... <laughs> Most of that's true apart from the end bit. Oh, right. <laughs> 
<laughs> he did say, I read about a Japanese tourist who said how wonderful our queen must be as they never get their emperor to jump out of a plane, crash into a ship, maybe. <laughs> um, <laughs> Prince Philip, of course, asked straight out, who are you? Mm. And when Jeremy Hunt <laughs> explained he was the health secretary, but had been culture secretary at the time of the Olympics and the Jubilee, Philip replied, well, they do move you people on a lot. <laughs> Um, incidentally, a poll was published recently that asked the question, was Jeremy Hunt a good culture secretary? Mm -hmm. And uh, here was the result. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, there was yet another Downing Street power struggle this week. Anyone read about that? Yes. Oh, cats. Indeed, it yes. was cats. Uh, Larry was David Cameron's cat and Freya was George Osborne. Should we have a look at them scrapping? Yeah. It's quite... <laughs> George Osborne's cat had simply requested to leave the main gate in Downing Street. <laughs> <laughs> and we've mentioned it, which unpleasant fracas took place in Downing Street and, and refuses to go away? It is, of course... Uh, Andrew Mitchell. Indeed. He yes. accused himself of um, not telling the truth in his previous statement. Yes. Ah, it looks like. He was in the House of Commons mm. and they, the man, Ed Billiband, was having a go at Mitchell, saying, why won't he resign? Um, and said, you swore at a policeman. And Mitchell, who was sitting in the House of Commons, apparently mouthed, I didn't swear. Now, last time he was asked to give evidence, he said he did swear. So he's accusing himself of not telling the truth. <laughs> it's a bit weird. Which is shocking. <laughs> <laughs> I think, this is what I understand from the radio this morning, is that Andrew your Mitchell... programme, was it? Uh, thank you for plugging my show, no. Ian. On... <laughs> and that's the afternoon. It's in the afternoon, in the yeah. afternoon. Two o'clock, BBC Radio 5 Excellent. Thanks for asking. Thank you. <laughs> I didn't exactly. know there was a Radio 5. <laughs> <laughs> now, apparently, uh, Andrew Mitchell's nail saw his people are saying, no, 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 he, he did swear, but he didn't swear at the policeman. He sort of swore to himself under his breath. <laughs> just, you know, I mean, Cameron just keeps backing these people like Coulson that are clearly just, clearly just horrible assholes. <laughs> <laughs> right, I, I'm using that agency, horrible assholes. Culture secretary is certainly be one of the way. <laughs> Or he could have just misheard. He could have, he could have said, you're Clegg. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think he was that insulting. No, it was yeah. too rude. Uh, and did you know he's related to David Mitchell? Is he? Which, no. which David Mitchell? Uh, his father. That's <laughs> called David Mitchell. <laughs> He's related to his father. <laughs> uh, so this is the news that Prince Charles's letters to ministers will not be made public. In a letter to Tony Blair in 1999, Prince Charles expressed his views on the decline of traditional farming methods. I cannot stay silent, he told his pot plant before putting pen to paper. <laughs> Meanwhile, the plebgate row rumbles on. If he does get sacked, Andrew Mitchell will end up as the worst possible advert for traditional conservative values, as he got on his bike and then lost a job. <laughs> <laughs> Ian and Will, take a look at this. Ah, coffee. Blair before he was haunted. <laughs> the future Prime Minister, oh God. <laughs> and a giant Nick Clegg drinking from a normal cup. <laughs> uh, this is Starbucks paying... This is what is it, 0.0003% tax? It's paid zero tax on its zero. profits since 2009. Do you know how much their sales were worth um, in the UK last year? Try us. 398 million. Uh, just worth wow. saying again, they paid no tax That's a at really all. big lot, that, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> and which company is Starbucks' nearest rival in this country? It's Costa, uh, I suppose, isn't mm. it? It is Costa. Costa Coffee, by way of comparison. Costa. Uh, here's their logo, incidentally. <laughs> um, <laughs> they had slightly lower sales, but still managed to cough up 15 million to the mm. Exchequer. How did Starbucks actually pull off their rather stunning feat? Well, you know? Well, Clever, not in a positive way, <laughs> Joe, but it's a, what they do is they pay themselves in America a royalty of 6% of everything, and then they have another, other companies in Switzerland and Amsterdam that they own that roast the coffee beans, and they pay them a load of money. I so, didn't realise you were so nerdy. That's brilliant. How <laughs> <laughs> did you know all this? I've long been nerdy, Joe. <laughs> and so that technically means they don't make a profit in Britain, and that's why they don't pay the tax. Yeah, but that's why we have a you know, a, a revenue system, is to say, that's an obvious scam. Would you grow up and give us the money, please? Yes. <laughs> I mean, people do, you know, Vodafone, they're registered in Ireland, and Philip, awesome. Philip Green's wife lives in Monaco. I mean, we, we've seen all this stuff before, and it's jolly amusing, but it's time for the money.
Well, I'll, t I'll tell you how they actually put it. They claim they had to pay royalties to Starbucks in other countries for the use of intellectual property such as its brand and business processes. <laughs> but they're paying that for themselves. How do you brand what? coffee? I don't know. Oh, OK, Richard. <laughs> how do you brand Thank coffee? You for well, just, that. just the logo, is that they're just paying money for...? Yeah, but they're paying themselves for their own brand. Mm. That's insane. Yeah. Let's go and kick their asses. No, no, no. <laughs> it doesn't sound good, Joe, does it? Richard, it doesn't. No, you're no. absolutely right. How are they, how are they We've moved on to daytime telly now. <laughs> <laughs> Which um, well-known coffee-producing country they, they buy their beans from? Uh, I think it's Switzerland. It is, indeed. Yeah. <laughs> so they, they buy their coffee beans uh, through a Starbucks subsidiary uh, based in a cupboard in Switzerland. <laughs> and, um, and whilst tax evasion is illegal, uh, tax avoidance is perfectly legal, I've been asked to point out yeah. by Jimmy Carr. <laughs> um, uh, Sean Keaveney, who presents the Six Music Breakfast Show, made a good point on our yesterday. Oh, six. Come on, not <laughs> <laughs> You're going to go through all of them. <laughs> yeah. I have been sent here by the head of BBC Radio to plug all of the little-known <laughs> BBC Radio <laughs> shows. Yeah, but he made a good point where he said, next time they ask you for your name on the cup, just say, tax-paying British citizen. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know who else has been in the frame recently for similarly low tax payments in the UK? All the big companies do. Uh, Amazon are very yeah. bad, Facebook, mm. yeah. Google. Yeah, you yes. Google tax, nothing comes up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of all the companies as well, Apple, it just seems like such a nice company, doesn't mm. it? Does it? And, well, <laughs> I'm obviously very naive. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, Blue Peter was your star, wasn't yeah. it? <laughs> Well, if you look at like Facebook, their sales last year, 175 million. The corporation tax paid 238,000. Oh. Effective tax rate, 0.136%. Uh, Amazon, sales over the last three years, 7.6 billion. Corporation tax paid nil. <laughs> Let's not forget uh, Sir Philip Green. He, of course, is from BHS and Topshop and arranged for his wife, who happens to live in Monaco, to be paid a £1.2 billion dividend a few years ago, the biggest single payout made to an individual in corporate history, thereby avoiding paying any UK tax on the transaction whatsoever. Where does he live? <laughs> <laughs> is he in a council flat in Penn? <laughs> Now, some people blame the complicated nature of the UK tax system for large companies avoiding tax, but don't worry, resources are being poured into solving the problem, as Newsnight discovered this week. How many people have you got working in the tax simplification system? Uh, we have a staff, effectively, of slightly oh. under six. Six! And <laughs> it's doing certain projects. I have a lot of backup with colleagues at Chartered Institute of Taxation as well. Just to, does George Osborne know you've only got six? <laughs> He hasn't, he hasn't got six, he's got slightly under yes. six. Yes. Yeah. It's a puzzling number, slightly under six. And on the subject of vast sums of money, who did we learn this week picked up a severance package worth about seven million quid when they left their job uh, last year? Uh, Rebecca Brooks. Ian, you know this better than me, but she, everyone thought she'd picked up 1.7 million, then it turned out she'd got seven million, I think. Is that right? Yeah, no, I should have been surprised. She's just given a huge payoff. Um, which is difficult to spend in prison. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> but as we said, under the terms of the arrangement, she might have to pay it back under the circumstances you've brought up. Oh, here. yeah, if, if she were found guilty. Yes. If she's oh, convicted... <laughs> if she is convicted of a criminal offence, that's right. And as her case hasn't come up yet, uh, I've been advised that I shouldn't say anything further. Um, <laughs> On the subject of Rebecca Brooks, why were David Cameron's private emails to her withheld from the Leveson inquiry? We don't know. It was because his personal lawyer decided they weren't relevant, so Cameron yeah. did not need to offer them up. Yeah, that's interesting, because for everyone else who was summoned to Lord Leveson, if he said, can I have the emails, please, you had to give them to him. But in the Prime Minister's case, he said, oh, when he says, give me the emails, does he mean these ones? And he consults his own lawyer, who says no, and he says, well, that's it then. How does that work? I mean, they're obviously full of things, saying, can I have some of the seven million? <laughs> <laughs> no, they're not. No. Uh, You're in a mischievous you... mood tonight, no, you know? no. <laughs> did you know, did you, you didn't have plans for Christmas? <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> the Independent this week mm. said, uh, the contents are described by sources as embarrassing. Mm. <laughs> I bet they are. Oh. LOL. Oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, let's just catch up with what boss man Rupert Murdoch's been doing this week. Uh, Any oh, yes. <laughs> He's been tweeting. He yeah. has. Um, He's gone back into Emperor Palpatine mode. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And there's a, a News Corp shareholders meeting coming up and some of his critics are trying to organise a revolt. So he tweeted, any shareholders with complaints should take profits and sell. Uh, that's business speak for piss off the lot of you, basically, <laughs> isn't it? The owner of the Wall Street Journal and the Times, he's a terrible writer. Isn't he? Did you see the tweet? It's oh, yeah, he's, he's always kind of misses the gaps and can't spell properly. No apostrophes. He sounds yeah. a bit like a drunk teenage internet troll. But <laughs> <laughs> Rebecca Brooks' payoff from News International amounted to more than £7 million. Although, in the light of the forthcoming court case, she's asked for it to be paid in snout. <laughs> um, <laughs> Seven million quid. Imagine what she'd have got if she'd actually been any good at her job. <laughs> um, according to the Mirror, the Leveson inquiry was not shown a number of emails between Rebecca Brooks and David Cameron, which were embarrassing and salacious. So not included in the Leveson inquiry, but very much at the centre of the ongoing Samantha Cameron <laughs> inquiry. <laughs> Uh, it's taken a while for the story about the Brooks Cameron emails to emerge. In fact, suspicions about the scale of the scandal were only aroused when Newsnight pulled an investigation into it. <laughs> Paul and Richard... Thank you. <laughs> Not quite sure whether you're laughing or having some sort of digestive problem, but thanks anyway. Um... Either way, it's very well. <laughs> <laughs> Please feel free. Um, you know, I love a burp and a fart when I'm... <laughs> oh, I do. That's, that's a good night out for you, isn't it? <laughs> it is. It's all, I always like to say, better out than in, a bit like Simon Cowell in a lifeboat. Um, <laughs> uh, so, Paul and Richard, here's another for you. Another one for us. Oh, yes. lovely. Mm. Oh, yes, the, uh, the American presidential debates, Obama and uh, Mitt Romney. That's uh, Obama delivering pizzas to everyone because he's a communist. <laughs> <laughs> That's him being told to stand up straight. Yeah, so there he is and he's running mate Paul Ryan. Uh, they're pointing at the sky. Basically, I, I think Obama was judged to have done better this time round than he did the first time round. Yeah, he seems to have like quite a low bar. Yes. Will yeah. was there. You saw it, though, didn't you? I, I saw the second debate. I can't watch the first one because I heard that Obama was bad and it was just like, oh, do you want, do you want to watch a film of your dad being beaten up? I was like, no. Um, <laughs> He's your dad. <laughs> yeah. Ronnie <laughs> was asked, how are you going to give uh, men and women equal pay? And his answer was, when I was governor of Massachusetts, uh, I noticed there weren't any women in the cabinet. So I said, go get me some women. <laughs> and people came back with binders full of women. <laughs> I know, it's like he thought that the best way to present myself as a candidate for president <laughs> of the United States is to imply that I maybe kidnap women. Yeah. <laughs> But he has an incredible history of saying the most incredibly stupid. Uh, yeah. You know, a few months ago, he said, I enjoy firing people. <laughs> I love making people unemployed. <laughs> Why is it that sort of like all the people that seem to run for presidents, there's always one of them that's a complete dodo. What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> and even in name Mitt. <laughs> Mitt? What sort of name is that? What's it short for? Myth you? I mean, what is it? <laughs> <laughs> well, Mr. and Mrs. Romney, you've got a new child. What are you going to call him? We're going to call him Mitt. <laughs> Why? <laughs> He's been very consistent on, uh, on gay marriage. Um, as, as, a, as a Mormon, um, Mitt Romney believes that marriage is a, a, a sacred covenant between uh, a man and no more than four women. <laughs> well, no-one's uh, mentioned the really big talking point um, in the election debate. It was the, um, the words that the president used oh. to describe a fatal attack on the American embassy in Libya. He said he described it as an act of terror, and Romney said, uh, oh, did you? It was a good moment. He said, check the record, and then the moderator said, yes, he did, he say, did that. say that. And Obama Romney... said, can you say that louder, please? Yeah. <laughs> Do you know who the moderator was? Uh, it was Candy. Candy. I just know her by that. Um... <laughs> Candy Crowley. Candy Crowley. Mm. Well done, indeed. And how did the twatosphere uh, react to this outrage? <laughs> there was someone called K. Sarah from London. Mm -hmm. They commented, sorry, but Western society continues to put its trust in overweight <laughs> post-menopausal women with typical disastrous effects. Can no one else see this? I mean, uh, no. 
Is that from Twitter? Yes. Yeah, don't go to Twitter for rational commentary. Go oh, to what? Radio 5. <laughs> 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 On your dial, no. just pass the police messages. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you listen to Five Live? No, of course they don't. No, you don't do they? You li all listen to Radio 4, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's it. Boone never knew they'd never asked that poll before. Okay, so how many people here, put your hands up if you listen to Radio 4? <laughs> <laughs> this programme is much cheaper on Radio 4, you know. <laughs> Come to yourselves. Uh, put your hands up if you listen to Radio 5. Oh, live. don't be ridiculous. <laughs> Oh, yeah, there's, there's, there's a few. At least eight. Yeah, Put your good. hand up if you've got something to do during the day. <laughs> <laughs> Just checking. Put your hands up if you've recently starred on BBC Two wearing a funny hat. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, Mitt's wife very movingly uh, described their struggle with poverty as a young married Mormon couple. They moved into a basement apartment and lived there for two years. Our dining room table was a fold-down ironing board. And neither one of us had a job because Mitt had plenty of shares. <laughs> <laughs> Well, let me move on then. How yeah. did a pizza chain outrage the pure, democratically spirited American people? Produced the, the mitt cheesy pizza. <laughs> cheesy mitt. <laughs> <laughs> they had actually offered a free pizza for life to um, anyone uh, at the election debates who would dare to ask the candidates if they preferred sausage or pepperoni. I think if one of them had said pepperoni, that would be... If Obama had said that, that would have been spun as being not being American enough. Yes. Now, what would have been American is if they said they'd like to pizza on top of their pizza. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, would you like to see how Mitt Romney introduced his prospective vice president, Paul Ryan? Join me in welcoming the next president of the United States, Paul Ryan. <laughs> Let me have a look at the man. <laughs> All I can say is, I would break my foot before I tired of kicking that man in the balls. <laughs> <laughs> Who won't be witnessing the US election at close quarters? President Kennedy. <laughs> <laughs> Gary McKinnon. Gary McKinnon, Gary McKinnon. Oh, yes. absolutely. Oh. He was looking for UFOs yeah. primarily, wasn't he? Yeah. He left a message on one hacked computer saying, US foreign policy is akin to government-sponsored oh. terrorism these days. And then added, I am solo. I will continue to disrupt at the highest levels. Your security is crap. Mm. <laughs> yeah. the, the, the password to get into the high ranking... Did you read this? The high yeah. ranking... It was password. It was password. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they just kept the default is, is that a silly thing to do with all your... <laughs> <laughs> This is the latest US presidential debate. Romney defended his position on women's <laughs> rights by saying that as governor of Massachusetts on his desk would be binders full of women, or as Mormons call them, the wedding albums. <laughs> <laughs> the Times reminded its readers of the party symbols of the Republicans and the Democrats, the elephant and the donkey, uh, representing both the weight and the intelligence of the average American voter. <laughs> Sorry to America. <clears throat> OK, some foreign news for you now. Uh, Ian and Will, take a look at this. Uh, foreign news? Certainly <laughs> 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 not yet, anyway. <coughs> uh, tossing the cable. You just chuck him out. <laughs> Scotland. Well, you call it that, I call it that, but uh, George Alagaya calls it... Scotland. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to see him calling yeah. that uh, again? Yeah. I would. Scotland. <laughs> <laughs> Scotland's got to have a referendum on independence. It's like an old marriage where you just think, well, it's kind of OK, but I'm not going to find anyone else. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a terrible idea. And everyone forgets so Alex Salmon was, you know, a great friend and supporter of Sir Fred Goodwin. The two of them talked about Scotland's um, future as a financial centre. They were going to be the new Iceland. <laughs> <laughs> The referendum will be in... 2014. 2014. On June the 24th, it's mm. the 700th anniversary of the Battle of Bannockburn. Yeah. 
or he might choose uh, March the 14th to coincide with World Chip Day. Um, <laughs> and what will the ballot paper contain? Just one question. Yeah. yeah that's In or right. out. So it's do you want it or not? Mm. That's right, because according to the Mail, Mr Cameron wanted the Scots to be faced with a single question with a yes-no answer. Uh, and that question is, you'll have had your tea. <laughs> um, <laughs> who will actually be able to vote in the election that wouldn't normally oh, get the right. chance? He's lowered it. It's going to be 16-year-olds, because that, that's a, a big fan base for Alex Salmond. Yeah. That's right. There's yeah. 123,000 teenagers aged between 16 and 17, or as they're known in Scotland, the middle-aged. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm not going to Scotland again. Ian, you're vaguely Scottish, aren't you? Will you yeah, get a chance to vote? No, I think you have to be resident. That's right. Uh, on the electoral roll, which in Scotland is heavily battered. <laughs> um... <laughs> I'll stop now. Oh, I know. I'm going to be assassinated with a deep arguing... fried Mars bar. <laughs> Good, I like the sound of that, actually. It sounds marvellous. Essentially, he's arguing that Scots should be independent, apart from apparently they're going to have Sterling if he wins, which is rather peculiar, and um, he hasn't made it clear where they're going to join the EU. So instead of being told what to do by London, they can be told what to do by Mrs Merkel. You know, which is a form of independence. The Greeks aren't thrilled by it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in Scotland, terms have been agreed for the referendum on independence. You're wondering how Alex Salmon managed to persuade David Cameron into agreeing to a referendum. The Daily Mail offered a clue. The UK's entire nuclear arsenal is located in Western Scotland. And there we were, worried about Iran. Um, <laughs> And so, to round two, the picture spin quiz. Uh, fingers on buzzers, teams. Oh, this is the man who we featured last week who didn't do what he was meant to do, but he did it this week, and it was fantastic. He jumped out of his uh, capsule 22 miles up, 23 miles above the Earth's surface. But uh, the thing that sort of was particularly impressive was his landing, I yeah. thought, where he just yeah. sort of landed and just sort of walked forward. It was amazing. It was, it was cool. as if he just jumped off a wall five feet high or something. It could um, only have been better if you'd have landed in an open-top sports car being driven. Just, just, <laughs> just, <laughs> just, land, just yeah. gone straight away. Yeah. Or oh, on the back of water skis. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 What happens when you travel faster than the speed of sound? Do you hear things that you've already Already said and yeah. I take them. Yeah. Yeah. It's like watching a repeat of this programme. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's should we just should we just have a look at it? Yeah, absolutely. Oh. Of it. Who's filming that? <laughs> now that'd be a worried moment. He got me. in trouble there though, didn't he? He did anything. Thought he was gonna pass out. Now stopping like that, that's the hardest bit of yeah. all. <laughs> Uh, now, seven million uh, people watched the jump on the internet, but what happened when his parachute opened safely? Um, they all, they all stopped watching. <laughs> well, one million viewers worldwide stopped watching. <laughs> it was being they were waiting for him to plummet Die. to yes, his death. Yes, uh, actually managed to break three records. Do mm. you know what they were? Maddest thing. Yeah. Fastest speed of a human being ever. Uh, well, the highest man balloon flight, mm. the highest altitude from which a man has free fallen, mm. and the first supersonic <laughs> free fall. And quickest to get laid after. That's right. <laughs> and not to mention the world's longest wee! <laughs> <laughs> um, now, having made it safely from the edge of space, what piece of unhelpful information almost caused a last minute disaster? Well, let's have a look at it. Felix, the wind is coming from the ridge. The wind is coming from the ridge. No, towards the ridge. Sorry. The wind is coming towards the ridge. Good to see Michael Fish Jr. has got some work. <laughs> um, uh, this is Felix Baumgartner, who jumped 24 miles from the edge of space, reached speeds of 833 miles an hour, and broke the sound barrier before making a perfect landing. That, David Blaine, is a stunt. <laughs> um, <laughs> OK, fingers on buzzers, teams. <laughs> Special pants to help you with your bed sores. Oh, well done. Yeah. They are caused by um, just being in the same position mm. for such a long time. So what nurses do is they turn people manually. Mm -hmm. Obviously, busy having sex with doctors a lot of the time. And <laughs> so these underpants, you plug them in, and you get an electric shock, which sends you up, and you turn him in. <laughs> There's just somebody in the control room. Give him forty thousand. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, it's quite. Or do they work walking down the street? 
Sorry? Can you walk round them down the street and have a radio controlled? Is it for women to control men? <laughs> by giving them electric underpants? I'm slightly paranoid of you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a really good idea. Don't you think it's a good idea? To control men with electric, electric underpants? I prefer just hitting them with a baseball bat. <laughs> <laughs> The um, smart e-pants yeah. are not the only technological clothing advance announced recently. Uh, what is this woman wearing? Oh, I saw this, yes. This is a thing where you can hug people via, the, the, uh, I don't know, via Twitter or something. A Facebook. You, but imagine the fun you could have with a pair of electric underpants. <laughs> 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 Never mind giving somebody a hug. 40,000 volts. <laughs> <laughs> You're late for work. You'll catch that bus. <laughs> You'll die! <laughs> These are called like a hug. It would be better if you went and saw the person and gave them a hug. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what actually happens, according to the mail, is that the vest inflates when friends like a photo, video or status update on the wearer's wall. What the f*** is yeah. happening? <laughs> <laughs> but I suppose it does beat poking yourself. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, these are the new electric underpants for use in hospitals. I don't know much about the science of electricity and fluids, but I suspect there may be a problem giving these underpants to elderly patients. <laughs> and to me as well, because, uh, you know what stress incontinence does. <laughs> um, <laughs> which means at the end of no. this round, it's uh, Ian and Will with five and Paul and Richard with five. Oh. Wow. <laughs> Uh, time now for the odd one out round. Uh, Ian and Will, your four are Jesus, Rothko's Black on Maroon, Vladimir Putin, and Richard III. Richard III just been dug up. Yep, his bones were apparently found in a car park. Yep. Uh, Vladimir Putin knows where lots of people are buried. <laughs> 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 the Rothko has been defaced. Yep. They've all been guests on Richard Bacon's show. Um, oh, that afternoon. Richard the Third interview was brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> so, kingdom or horse? <laughs> um, about painting. Uh, oh. Richard, the, there are no portraits of Vladimir Putin. Well, the, there was one. Here. Putin. Putin. <laughs> <laughs> Let me give you the first part. They've all been painted over. Oh, the Jesus image, was it was it Oh, Italy? what, that it, woman who did the yes. touch-up and... Yes. Oh, God. Shall I tell you? Yeah, yeah go uh, on. They've all been painted over, apart from Vladimir Putin, whose portrait was burnt by Pussy Riot. <laughs> um, and here we come to that um, lovely fresco of Jesus Christ, which was painted over by an enthusiastic amateur restorer in her local church in Spain. Let's have a look. This is how Christ was depicted originally... And this, as he looks now, after a DIY restoration. Uh, now, King Richard III's portrait was painted over during the reign of the Tudors. And why has he been in the news recently? Was they he... found his remains under a car park in Leicester, was it? That's yeah. right. Mm. So he's not just been painted over, he's been tarmacked over. <laughs> um, they have all been painted over, apart from Vladimir Putin, whose portrait was burnt by Pussy Riot. One supporter of Pussy Riot is former world chess champion Gary Kasparov, who, outside the court, was attacked by members of the Russian Orthodox Church. He found himself trapped in a corner by two <laughs> bishops. <laughs> um, one of Pussy Riot's songs urges Russian housewives to join the revolutionary... Oh, sorry. Getting tired now. I need my electric pants on. Um, <laughs> one of Pussy... <laughs> <laughs> One of Pussy Riot's songs urges Russian housewives to join the revolutionary struggle with the lyrics, Take your vacuum cleaner and get off on it, have an orgasm. <laughs> on behalf of casualty departments everywhere, <laughs> I'd like to point out that is for women only. Um, <laughs> After his death, Richard III's portrait... You must have had, but did you ever get people turning up... What do you mean with, I must have had what? Well, <laughs> page, you know, people turning up with very... Even, you know, although you weren't in a general hospital, in, in the morgues, it's like, did you ever get people arriving with strange things inside them, which they tried to explain away? Yes, I thought that the saddest one that, mm. that we had was um, a woman arrived with a, the cap of a bottle of Brasso up her vagina because she thought that's the sort of contraceptive cap you needed when you were a <laughs> Had a nice shiny vagina there. It's <laughs> um, <laughs> all right, that won't go out. I think it will. You don't. <laughs> no. 
<laughs> Art to his death, Richard III's portrait was painted over. The skeleton of Richard III was found in a car park not far from Bosworth Field. Experts digging at the site thought it was just some rubble mixed with rags and animal remains, but it turned out to be Leicester city centre. <laughs> So I can't, I can't go to Scotland or Leicester <laughs> yeah. now. Paul and Richard, uh, here are yours. <laughs> Lady Gaga, Pauline Prescott, Morrissey and Tiger Woods. This may have a, uh, a meat theme. Mm. Lady Gaga wore a meat suit. Yes, yes, that's right. Uh, yes. Um, yes. Morrissey won't allow meat. He will not perform at any venue that sells meat, I don't think. In fact, I can... Uh, yes, that's right. I'll just cut in there for a moment. I, I, I was... Uh, somebody once told me a story, somebody who was uh, promoting him at the time, back in the, you know, the Smith days, the early 80s. And uh, the manager and the promoter were talking in the office while the concert's going on, and suddenly Morrissey comes in. He's totally distraught. He can't talk. He can't speak. He's, he's just white in shock, and eventually they get the story out of him, somebody threw a sausage at him. <laughs> <laughs> a cooked sausage was thrown at Morrissey. Did it hit him? It, 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 it was near enough for him to be sort of interacting with it. <laughs> and, <laughs> so, well, so cut in there, so it probably is about meat. So, yeah, so Lady Gaga, Mor Morrissey... Morrissey yeah, um, Tiger Woods treats waitresses like meat. <laughs> um, <laughs> and Pauline Prescott's husband looks like a glistening ham. Um, <laughs> well, I think the meat thing is clearly right. I mean, because Lady Gaga and Morrissey, must, there must be a meat theme. Um, you can actually narrow that down to sausages. Sausages, oh. OK. Oh, well, so the Morrissey thing is correct. Oh. Um, did Lady Gaga... It was made of bacon, her outfit. Did it have sausages that sort of...? Well, let's say, let's say she wore a sausage in some way, which we have not yeah. yet determined. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, I don't know. Uh, we, we say meat, but we can't go further than that, really. Unless you can think no, of more. No, no, I can't. Well, I take a wild guess then. Uh, okay, you? well, uh, the wild guess is Pauline Prescott is the odd one out because everyone else has had sausage related incidents happen to them on a daily basis. Well, you're the... right, Pauline Prescott is the odd one mm. out. Right. Um, <laughs> and, but that's because all the other three have had a sausage thrown at them. Uh, yes. Uh. Uh, except for Pauline Prescott, who was wooed by a string of sausages. <laughs> <laughs> that's no way to talk about John Prescott. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Tiger Woods was recently hit by a hot dog while playing a round of golf. An eagle, a birdie and three bogeys were the main ingredients of that sausage. <laughs> OK, it's time now for the Missing Words round, which this week features as its guest publication, The Mace Bearer. And we start with Zutalo Watt. Oh, is this... Oh. It's a menage à six. <laughs> is this Vladimir Putin? <laughs> <laughs> is, isn't this the, the, the personal life of the, the oh. French Prime Minister? No. Oh, is it um, Fifty Shades of Grey, which they all find very tame? No. Um, uh, Do the French find it tame? Do yes. They? yes oh, right. Yeah, right. yeah. yeah they call it Fifty Shades of... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you, Zuta Laws, my phone bill is 11,721 million million euros. According to the Daily Mail, Frenchwoman Solène Saint-José called the phone company to query the charge and was put on hold, thereby doubling the bill. <laughs> so, uh, next, what can lead to mace bearer's shoulder? Carrying a mace on your shoulder. Mm. <laughs> uh, carrying the city's mace can lead to oh. mace bearer's shoulder. Mm. Rather exciting, isn't it? This it is. is news from the editor's wife, who writes about her husband complaining of aching muscles in his arm and shoulder. Of course, it might not be Mace Bearer's <laughs> shoulder. <laughs> um, and, oh, finally, oh, fi and finally, uh, what was a remarkably good icebreaker oh. when European finance ministers met Gordon Brown? Uh, is it HMS Endurance? <laughs> 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 No, the answer is a silver chamber pot used by George IV. <laughs> this, of course, is from the mace bearer. The pot raised a smile with everyone, except the Greek <laughs> finance minister, who looked at it enviously as he doesn't have one to piss in. <laughs> um, so, the final scores are... Um, Ian and Will have six, but Paul and Richard have ten. <laughs> 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 Uh, but before we go, there's just time for the caption competition. Paul and Richard get this. Goldilocks, the search continues. <laughs> <laughs> and Ian and Will have that. Mm. 
50 lampshades of grey. <laughs> 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 On which note, we say thank you to our panellists in his and Will Smith, Paul Merton and Richard Bacon. And I leave you with news that in central London, Boris Johnson brings a whole new meaning to the word whiff-waff. <laughs> <laughs> Arriving at the White House to interview the Vice President, Piers Morgan is disappointed to be told that the Obamas aren't at home. <laughs> <laughs> And in Idaho, there's a surprise for one young supporter as Mitt Romney agrees to show her the new tattoo he's had done of his opponent's face. <laughs> <laughs> Good night. Timing is